Ooh, I like that red bezel. That's pretty cool. Hey guys, this is Dave. Welcome back to Just The Watch. And today we're doing another unboxing plus. Uh, this time we're taking a look at a special edition of the Spinnaker Spence in support of Help For Heroes. In this video, I'm going to unbox the watch, give you my first impressions, Right off the bat, the design really kind of screams Spinnaker. This is one of their classic watches, uh, going back to their kind of waterproof leather straps that they used to include on a lot of their watches. And you got that kind of Chevy style hour hand. Anyways, let's get the packaging off and take a closer look at it. Test it out for a couple of days. And come back at the end and tell you what my conclusions are. Okay, so it's been a few days and I've had the Spinnaker Spence on my wrist for a while and I really like it. Um, I think this is maybe one of my favorite designs I've seen from Spinnaker. Uh, really cool colors especially. I love the color choices that they've gone with the special edition, but the finishing was a little bit rougher than I had hoped for and I feel like it could have used a Specs refresh. Now, now, as mentioned, this watch is in support of Help for Heroes. Help for Heroes is a charity based in the UK uh, that supports veterans who were injured while serving in the British Armed Forces. I believe 5% of the proceeds of these sales will be going uh, to Help for Heroes to support their work. So I think it's a really cool kind of tie-in between Spinnaker and a lot of their sort of um, military nautical history um, to be working with a, uh, a veterans organization like this. Anyways, let's open it up and see what we got. Now this is a watch that I received for free from Spinnaker for review purposes. I also have a discount code that if you use, you will get a 20% off discount. However, I will also get a small commission from Spinnaker if you do that. Other than that, I did not receive any compensation at all from Spinnaker and they did not have any input into the content of this review. Anyways, let's get the packaging off and take a closer look at it. All right, let's see what we got here. Indexes are really cool. I like those kind of applied indexes with the loom kind of going down the center. Be curious to see how the loom performs. Uh, let's see what we got. Very nice uh, screw down crown. Feels very smooth. And this is running a Seiko NH35 inside of it. So you're getting uh, hacking and hand winding. Get that movement running. Yeah, very clearly defined date position. Easy to find that, it's always nice to see. And easy to find the time setting as well. Let's see what the size on this guy is. Okay, that's one thing. So it feels like the underside of the crown guard's a little bit sharp there. So when you're, you can definitely feel that scraping against your finger when you're wind and unwind the crown. That's, but let's check the size. I'm getting 42 millimeters across, 22 millimeter lugs. It's like about 14 and a half millimeters tall. But lug to lug is pretty compact. It's about 47 millimeters lug to lug. So that should wear pretty well on a good variety of wrists. This red bezel insert appears to be an aluminum insert there. Let's feel the action. Bezel action is very pleasant to use, uh, nice to find clicks. Not a lot of back play, a little bit of back, back play in there. Uh, and then also the kind of edging on it, it feels a little bit slippery to grab, so maybe uh, gonna have a little bit of trouble there if your hands are wet. But overall, bezel action is pretty good. Case finishing is brushing all over the place. So it looks like you're getting vertical brushing down the sides, horizontal across the top. And case shape, it looks a little bit stubby with that 14 millimeters and that short lug to lug, but I bet that's gonna wear pretty well on the wrist. Um, Spinnaker does a pretty good job at designing their cases to have a nice curve to them, so they usually hug the wrist pretty well. Get that on there in a second. Uh, let's take a look at the strap. The strap is a leather strap, feels very high quality. Nice and thick, really nice smooth finish to it. Nice sheen, and I love the colors that they brought in. So the strap has kind of like a navy hue to it. But then the keepers, they're bringing in that sort of light sky blue and red, which is part of that special edition help for the heroes. I believe the color scheme is meant to uh, emulate the colors of the British military, the different branches. Uh, so you're getting that also here on the stitching on the strap. 
And this is a very nice buckle too. Uh, pretty thick, nicely brushed and signed. So very impressive buckle. Now Spinnaker, usually these straps, when they include them with the dive watch, they're, uh, they're billed as waterproof. I have taken some of them in the water and they seem to hold up fine. But you know, leather straps, taking them into the water, it's usually not a pleasant experience. They tend to take a long time to dry and can be a little bit soggy on the wrist after you get them out. Um, so I'll, I think I'm going to throw this on a rubber strap and during the testing phase and try it on that as well if you do want to take advantage of that full 200 meters of water resistance. And this one does have full 200 meters of water resistance. On you know, Spinnaker, they really do a lot of vintage style watches. And part of vintage watches is they often had water resistances around 150 or 100 meters. Um, so a lot of their watches have lower water resistance ratings. Uh, this one comes in at the full 200 meters. It does, however, only feature a mineral crystal. And I also just realized that this whole time there was one more sticker to peel off. So, sorry about that. Dial looks a lot nicer now. <laughs> yeah, the dial is a navy, very dark blue. Contrasts well with the red bezel. You know, maybe playing off a little bit of the Tudor Black Bay colors but it looks really sharp. Okay, let's get this on the wrist and see how it looks. Yeah, so it wears really well on my seven and a half inch wrist. I think it's just a, a really perfect size for that. Um, pretty comfortable. Again, the, the curvature of the lugs I think helps a lot. And then on this leather strap, it's a nice, comfortable leather strap. But overall, really good dimensions, I think, for anyone with medium to large size wrists. And you know, with that 47 millimeter lug to lug, even if you have a smaller wrist, this is probably gonna be one of Spinnaker's better wearing watches for you. Let me zoom in a bit and take a look at the dial and see what we're getting here. Uh, so it looks like you're getting brushed hands and then also probably some brushed applied markers. Pretty cool look there. Uh, the second hand in particular, uh, custom second hand, so with the navy, red, and either teal or sky blue on the counterbalance, and then you're getting a lollipop on the front of it. So you should get a fully loomed second hand. Nice loom pip on the bezel. And that classic red aluminum bezel really looks kind of cool. Been seeing a lot more ceramic bezels lately, but at this price range, aluminum is just fine, and it does have a really nice vintage look to it. Kind of cool to see the markers sort of cutting into that chapter ring. Yeah, it's a very interesting dial. I like that. And then that hour hand with that sort of Chevy shape to it. Also pretty cool. Um, something distinct. You know, it gives you the the added legibility of a large hour hand without totally ripping off like the um, you know Mercedes or Snowflake that kind of seems really overdone. So I like that design choice there. Really big, beefy crown. Really easy to grab and operate, so that's also nice. All right, let's go ahead and kill the lights and take a look and see if we can see how the loom looks on this. Now, Spinnaker can be a little bit hit and miss on their loom. Um, they seem to be typically on the average side. So usually coming in a little bit under Seiko. I'm gonna charge this one up. And I feel like the Spence is, is pretty good for Spinnaker. Okay, I wanted to compare this to some other watches just to get a better feel for how the loom looks. So here's the Spinnaker Spence, and then here is the Seiko Samurai. So yeah, you can see that the Samurai is significantly brighter there and probably gonna last a good deal longer. However, if you compare the Spence here to the Spinnaker Fluce, um, you can see it's much brighter than the Fluce, so that's a welcome improvement there. Fluce was kind of on the weak side when it came to Loom. And then here again is the Spence, and then this time next to the Dumas. And the Dumas I felt like had some pretty good Loom for Spinnaker. This looks like it's... Yeah, so maybe the uh, that giant minute hand is going to outshine everything out, but else. But otherwise, I feel like the Spence is a little bit stronger than the Loom on the Dumas. So maybe a little bit on the average side for Loom in general, but pretty good for Spinnaker. All right, let's go ahead and try this guy out. So, so far I think that the leather strap is a really great option, but it is a dive watch. So let's try and put this on some actual dive straps. I've got four of them here I want to try out. Let's check it out. All right, let's start off with the simplest one. This is an Elite uh, NATO strap, Bond NATO from North Watch Straps. Yeah, it really goes well with the kind of vintage look of the 
Suspense Help for Heroes Edition. So definitely going to give you better water performance than a leather strap. But let's uh, let's move on to try some other ones. All right, next up we have this kind of navy blue waffle strap from Uncle Seiko, and that looks really cool. Like perfectly matches the dial of the watch. So I think this is like this is how I would wear this watch would be on this strap. Then you're getting full advantage of that 200 meters of water resistance. You know, perfectly fits the theme of the watch with the colors and the vintage style. That's a cool pairing there. Okay, now this is a genuine isoframe strap. Uh, this strap runs over $100. Um, so yeah, comparable cost and probably more heritage than the watch itself. A little bit overkill for this watch, but it looks really cool. Kind of toughens it up a bit. Super comfortable on the wrist. You know, if you got an isoframe style strap, you're gonna get the same look. Another good waterproof option. All right, so this is Spinnaker's massive chain bracelet, kind of a really thick mesh that comes with the Dumas. So if you're a Spinnaker collector and you already have the Dumas and want to try that strap on there, looks great and yeah, really good option for looking for a bracelet. So if you're a bracelet guy and you've got this watch, yeah, chain mesh looks pretty cool on it, I think. So I've had some time to try out the loom in real world usage and you know it's it's an adequate amount of loom. It gives you a nice bright glow for a short amount of time um, but it doesn't quite you know live up to the same standard of a lot of other dive watches out there. Now I did actually get a chance to include this in a uh, loom trial with some other watches in my collection when I was doing another video so I thought I'd throw that in here as well so you can see. Um, it didn't fare particularly well coming in last place in both categories. Uh, with a score of six after one hour on its hand brightness, that means that the hands were very difficult to read after an hour. You know, the Seiko Samurai was about three times brighter and that was, you know, definitely readable. The markers fared a little bit better, but without the hands there to really help it out, you know, it's still pretty hard to read. But you know, for those times when you're walking from a bright environment into a dark environment, you'll definitely get a strong glow uh, initially to allow you to read the watch. You also get a pretty good glow for the first, you know, 20, 30 minutes after you've turned off the lights at night. But if Loom is something that is a high priority for you, this might not be the best option. Okay, so it's been a few days and I've had the Spinnaker Spence on my wrist for a while and I really like it. Um, I think this is maybe one of my favorite designs I've seen from Spinnaker. Uh, really cool colors especially. I love the color choices that they've gone with the special edition, but the finishing was a little bit rougher than I had hoped for and I feel like it could have used a specs refresh. So the Spence is one of Spinnaker's older models. They, they came out with it a few years back and they kind of brought it out again for this Help for the Heroes edition uh, with a new fresh colorway. And probably when it came out for the specs and the price was probably a, a really good deal. However, now in 2021, we've seen a lot of micro brands offering, I think, more for the money and especially a lot of Chinese brands out there. So the competition has gotten a bit stiffer. Um, I would have loved to have seen this watch with a sapphire crystal and with better loom. If they could have improved those two things, I think this would have been an easy buy at $285. Now, even without those, the price is not unreasonable. It's still a pretty good, pretty decent price for what they're offering. Um, it's just that it's maybe not as good of a deal as it might have been a few years back. Slightly more disappointing was the finishing on the watch, particularly on the underside of the crown. It was a little bit sharp and it is a fairly substantial crown guard. So when you're unscrewing the crown guard to wind the watch or to set the time, you can definitely feel that scraping on the underside against your finger, which is a little bit unpleasant and kind of surprising to see. Also, the overall finishing of the watch is very simple, just kind of plain, all brushed, and not particularly amazing brushing. Um, yeah, just very simple there. But the design of the watch is very good. I really like uh, just the kind of classic Spinnaker look here. Uh, they, it has a vintage feel, and yet it doesn't feel like it is a complete copy of any particular model that I can think of in the past. Uh, I especially like how they've gone with this sort of, uh, I don't know, Chevy style hour hand. A lot of classic dive watches would have their own unique spin on the hour hand. Rolex obviously had the Mercedes, Tudor had the Snowflake, and Seiko has that nice big arrow. 
So it's kind of cool to see something that is a little bit different that you don't see every day and yet is not really like anything else out there. Also, I really like the indices that they've done. Uh, the layout's really great there. Uh, you get these kind of applied indices that have a slit down the middle that they filled with loom in that slit. So really cool looking dial and indexes and handset. Now you pair that look together with this color scheme, uh, with this kind of navy blue dial and this red bezel, and I think you have something that's a little bit special. It's just a really fun watch to wear, and I really enjoyed uh, taking it out and having it on my wrist. That red bezel, I think, you know, obviously the Tudor Black Bay has done it, but I haven't seen a lot of other brands doing it that aren't like direct homages or copies of the Black Bay, and here it just works really well. Now, even though the case finishing isn't that great, the case design, I think, really is. And that's one area where Spinnaker tends to do a good job. They, they tend to make very comfortable cases on the wrist, and this one's no exception. It's a 42 millimeter diameter watch, but the lug to lug is only 47 millimeters, which is fairly compact for a watch of this size, which makes it wear very nicely on the wrist. It's very comfortable, it's got a good curvature, and because of that kind of shorter lug to lug that you might find in a lot of other divers, uh, I think it'll wear on a pretty wide range of wrists. On my seven and a half inch wrist, it's just incredibly comfortable. I love the way it looks. Um, just great overall case design there. So this watch is $285, 5% of that does go to support Help for Heroes, um, so part of this is going to a good cause. I believe I also have a discount code that will get you, I think, 15% off of that. I think it's valid on this one as well, so I'll leave that down below. And with that 15% off code, if that works, I think that'll bring it to a more appealing price range. But even at the $285, I don't think this is a terrible price for this, uh, and it is a really fun watch to wear on the wrist. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I love to hear your comments and suggestions down below. Um, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think of this watch. But we'll see you next time. Bye.